Hello guys, Sol here again with a new um, Tasty Records YouTube video. I want to take this one kind of more laid back. I want to talk about some stuff I'm passionate about. Um, I'd like to say a big thanks to Faye, who is kind of the um, driving force behind this video, who said she really missed the Sol Pickups videos. This is going to be a bumper episode of... Um, all the stuff I've picked up from January to March, late March. But this is going to be a regular feature on the show, hopefully, so it's going to be uh, at the end of each month. I feel like the more I talk about stuff which is closest to my heart, the better this channel will do. The success of the Dark Side of the Moon video has made us really uh, interested in growing the channel as best it can be making a bit more effort with uh, the new Rivals videos, more effort, more put more effort into them, which will come out every fortnightly now, fortnightly. As as always, independent record shop in uh, Ultrium Greater Manchester. It is Greater Manchester. We do loads of brand new. We, we put so much brand new, so much pre-love stuff out every week. And um, you can buy most of it on our website. So link in the description for that one. And just want to kind of make this video as a bit of an introduction, a bit of a, to a lot of new subscribers, and just hoping you'll kind of enjoy the content we put out here. Without further ado, I'm going to talk about my new pickups for bumper episode. So get settled with a cup of tea or whatever. Uh, so first off, I picked up this one. This is uh, the Soul. The soul jazz, the soul of jazz piano. That's what it is. Um, this is a Riverside record from South Pasadena, California, USA. It says right there on the back. And I was listening to uh, Thelonious Monk and Alone in San Francisco. And it's a very hard to find record, actually. The shop actually had one for £130, I think it was. And I was like, I'm not a bit too rich for me at the moment. But I did pick up this, which is, I assume, from the same collection. Because uh, it's a US kind of original. And um, it's got the first track from Thelonious Monk, uh, Lo Alone in San Francisco on there. But yeah, loads of great other kind of great piano players on here. Bill Evans, uh, Dick Morgan's on here as well. He's great. And uh, original Riverside, you know. It was pretty cheap, so I thought I'd pick it up. Nice thing. Jazz piano is one of them things where I think anyone can really appreciate it. Um, it's very mellow, but still very engaging. Another jazz one for you. We've got uh, John Coltrane, Live at Burland. That must be one of the best album covers I've ever seen. Um, I, I want to put it on my wall, it's so good, you know. But this is kind of live John Coltrane um, from, I think half of it is live and half of it is kind of in the studio. Um, I know Alabama always done the studio, but that's the standout track on um, this album for sure. Kind of, the Al Alabama's an amazing, uh, beautiful tune on here. And um, it's kind of experimental post-bop Coltrane, really veering into his more kind of experimental late stage stuff. Um, and I love it, you know, I'm here for every moment. Uh, this is on the Impulse label, the kind of late, uh, early 70s label there. But uh, original impulse nonetheless, and all of these records, from what I've found, sound very, very good. And continue my impulse collection, you know, because it's something I'm very keen on collecting. But yeah, nice one, that. Fairly cheap, fairly marked record, but plays pretty well. Um, next one. This is Daniel Johnston. The music of Daniel Johnston, Welcome to My World. Uh, when I, f I first thing I gotta say is I love Daniel Johnston. I'll show you how much I love him right now. So these are Daniel Johnston trousers from Vans Off the Wall. Great kind of artwork on there from I don't know his album covers. Um, but yeah, uh, very kind of honest lo-fi uh, singer-songwriter. It is almost at its core, and um, this is. A compilation which I heard when I got into him in like university and I did look it up and it was only on CD at the time but only recently it's been put on kind of vinyl which is great to see loads of bonus tracks on here um I live my broken dreams from the MTV uh, set he did 
and that's great. Uh, that's like a bonus track on here. It's got don't let your down, don't let your sun go down. Your grievances. Uh, loads of kind of. It is a greatest hits, but I find a lot of his albums, um, the songs are interspersed with a lot of kind of not filler, but like very experimental. So if you want all of his like very heartfelt music, it's all on here really, and it's a great album. Listen to it quite a lot, and um, yeah, get into his mind. Get into his mind. Another singer songwriter. We've got the Great White Wonder. Uh, Royal Albert Hall. So both these things are not actually true. Great White Wonder is code word for Bob Dylan from the bootleg uh, trademark equality, and Royal Albert Hall is actually the Manchester Free Trade Hall, just down the road down there. And this is the infamous concert where he got heckled for going electric, and um, someone called him Judas there. And this is like an Air Canada because the band were kept, the pa the band played with him on these things, and they were from Canada. A really great live album. He's he, really punky, um, really kind of uh, you can hear the crowd kind of very restless all the way through, and um, he's just loving every moment of it. It's so good, and um, quite a hard to find bootleg, especially around here in Manchester where it kind of happened, and it's an American press on the. Um, um, what's it called? Trademark quality pig label, which is really cool. And yeah, not I, I've, I've as you'll see later on, kind of this started a bit of a short-term trend in my record collecting. But um, yeah, great stuff. Glad to have picked it up. At the same time, when I was in the shop, I should mention this is really around the fountain in um, Stratford uh, where I got these records from. But uh, Nige in there, shout out to Nige. He's mentioned to me like twice before. And said, um, "This is one you really want to pick up. This Lou Reed um, speakers corn. It's one of the best sounding records I've ever heard." And I was like, "Wow, um, I better, I better take his word for it, I guess." And I just said, "Yeah, I'll take one. Why not?" And he said, "If you are, if you are not satisfied with it, um, you can bring it back. Like no problem." But got it home, and uh, I was not dissatisfied. It really brings out that it's got a lovely like textured RCA label. It really, as opposed to any other version I've heard before, it really brings out like the Bowie uh, production. You can hear him all over this record, like his vocals, but also his kind of flares, which you you know you can hear in his own music. And um, just like it's like he's present all the time. Um, I, that, that's the only thing I'd, I'm my main takeaway from this. And um, obviously, like so much detail. Um, it's a very kind of um, when but when I listen to it, it feels so organic because like all the kind of horns are very in your face and the strings on Perfect Day and stuff. But uh, yeah, love this record. I'm glad to have a really great copy of it. Uh, we also have another great one I picked up. Really happy to have this. This is uh, the Soft Boys Underwater Moonlight, and um, this is kind of like early 80s new wave very very the main thing about them though is they're very very inspired by um sid barrett and the the, the main guy uh, robin hitchcock he, he's he's basically imitating a lot of um sid barrett's kind of solo and part of um the piper gates of dawn and i just i love sid barrett as well and uh, I, i've known about this record for quite a while this is the first uk press um, I got it for a pretty fair price, I'd say, for what they usually go for. It was quite expensive, but it was like, I saw it and I was just like, gotta have it, gotta have it. Um, loads of great tunes, loads of great tunes on here. Um, loads of great guitar work on here, like the Telecaster really kind of shines in this record. Um, and love that cover as well, very surreal. Like, my favourite part of it is, isn't even these two people. It's like the hazy background. It's just so kind of unusual, you know? That's the, that's the record itself. Nice thing. Uh, glad to have it. As mentioned, um, the Great White Wonder sent me on its a quest, and um, I got into a bit of a Bob Dylan bootleg mood, which culminated in this. This is uh, the Basement Tapes 3LP box set. In 1967, just after that tour with um, the band, uh, they kind of retired into his Woodstock home and started playing a lot of strange music, a lot of 
folk, a lot of country, a lot of um, kind of gospel tunes almost. And they're all kind of made for other people. Like that, He wasn't recording a new album. He was recording all these songs, brand new tracks for other people to record. And it's just unbelievable that this was never released until like it was ob- obligated because there were so many uh, bootlegs. Um, they were like, well, we're going to have to just put it out like officially and uh, we sell that in the shop. But this is three LPs of the raw kind of takes before they'd done any production on them. And it's as it's meant to sound, loads of great tracks on her. Um, so obviously six sides of record and you kind of just put any side on and it just throws you into this. You don't know what you're going to get really. And um, yeah, it comes in this box, comes in, comes a really nice booklet, like a nice glossy booklet and um, pictures of them kind of playing and stuff. And uh, I got a pretty good deal on this. So it was meant to come with two CDs, I think, and they weren't included. So pretty good deal. Just a three LP box set. And I do still play this quite a lot. It's quite a good mellow album to relax in the evenings to. And I just kind of like find myself putting it on and uh, playing along with my acoustic guitar. Um, Pete Seeger, the, the folk singer's guitar guide. So this is one I had on, I, I saw quite a long time ago and forgot about it. And then I found, I knew that it was what David Gilmore from Pink Floyd uh, he learnt guitar off this record, basically. Uh, his parents came back from... I saw this in documentary, like... His parents came back from New York and brought him Bob Dylan's first album and this thing, uh, which kind of comes with a, a booklet and it's just kind of, like, tells you how to play guitar. And it's Pete Seeger, um, you know, the Pete Seeger, the folk guy. He uh, just telling you kind of how to play acoustic guitar which is quite nice you know and it's on folkways label so um quite collectible i know some people who like try and get them all which is pretty crazy but um yeah lots of unique music on this uh, label and um pretty heavy you know the sort of stuff they're going to teach you is tuning up first chord two more chords one this is um chet baker and art pepper cool jazz picture of heath uh this is the kind of new tone poet release uh, from Pacific Jazz which is a really great label and um, this was kind of their um, it, it's very early stuff so the the essay which kind of comes with the record was talking about oh wasn't life good like back then wasn't it like so blissful and I was like not really there was a lot of like tension in the 1950s and I think this music does have a lot of substance to it you know um I think the of the West Coast players is kind of like um, somewhat melancholy. There's somewhat melancholy to that and romance, and obviously very aware because they'd a lot of them were veterans from World War Two. They're also aware of kind of like global affairs with like the Cold War and stuff. Um, but yeah, I really liked listening to this, and it's got kind of Chet Baker on here, Art Pepper, two of my favorite West Coast players, two of the most popular West Coast players at least, and. Um, some like great tracks in here, Resonant Emotions, stuff like that, uh, on the Tone Poet label as well. So it's a really dynamic sounding press- pressing. Uh, really happy with all of these. Like unbelievable the the quality which has been churned out from Blue Note recently. Um, this one's another one which I picked up from a record fair. This is Chet Baker and Russ Freeman, and he played on his um, Sing sessions, and I was kind of like. I gotta pick. I I love their interplays, but to be honest, again, I was kind of uh, a bit underwhelmed by this album. It was it was quite fast in places. Uh, maybe I just need to give it a few more listens. I probably will. Um, come from Barcelona, as well as a Spanish press with a kind of Barcelona music shop on here. Um, I'll show you the label. Kind of like nice Pacific uh, label on there. Seeing a bit more Pacific later on. Again, kind of stuff I collect. Um, kind of stuff I like to listen to as well I listen to these a lot um, while I'm at home so next up I got for a really good deal at a record fair uh, this The Birds Tambourine uh, Mr. Tambourine Man first US press first US stereo press uh, on the 2i Columbia label 
really nice. And um, it's a pretty nice copy as well, it plays really well. A uh, few bit, a bit of storage wear to the sleeve, which can be expected. And um, to be honest, again, like I did really like listening to this. I remember, um, again, listening to this quite a lot um, in my life. And when I listened to it this time, I was kind of like uh, bemused, especially by We'll Meet Again at the end, you know, the Vera Lynn tune. And I was like, why, why did they include that? Like, and then I was talking to someone in the shop about the birds and they were like, I said that about uh, that last track and they were like, oh, well, yeah, it's still cool though, wasn't it? And I was just like, yeah, I guess, you know, I do like the bird, the, the tambourine, Miss Tambourine Man tune. And um, I love, uh, I'd probably feel a whole lot better, uh, but I don't really see myself playing this that much, but it's a nice thing for sure. It only cost me £10 from the record fair as well, which is a great deal. Um, another one I got from record fair. Moondog. Uh, now, Moondog was, um, again, a bit of an outsider, similar to, like, Daniel Johnston, and apparently he used to just, like, hang out on the streets of New York, and a lot of people knew who he was. But um, he, ba he basically, like, had a lot of, kind of, music in him, because he, he'd learned a lot about composing and stuff from his youth. Um, and he was actually blind, and then someone, like, let him loose in an orchestra... And the result is just pretty unbelievable. You know, when we were talking about, like, context in music um, before with Chet Baker, and this, like, you know, you can feel the space race almost in this album, like, the, per, like, building rockets and kind of the competition and the kind of scale of that. But, yeah, it's a great kind of modern classical record. That's how I would describe it um, on CBS. So it was quite popular back in the day. Um, quite hard to find nowadays on vinyl but um, yeah really enjoyed listening to this and got to add it to my collection another one um, on the train there's only a few more left a few <laughs> but this is a, another original Bob Dylan bootleg um, this is kind of it's called the White Wonder WW2 um, and it's had this lovely art drip drawn on it got it quite cheap as again um so this is what i really like about this record it came with this kind of slip as well so you can kind of see what uh, the content is double album all new underground material from the following four sessions so it's kind of like one side is outtakes from bringing all back home and highway 61 then one side is like the basement tapes i showed before another is kind of um kind of like early um, early live stuff from him and then another one is kind of like outtakes from the first and second albums which is really really cool and it sounds it's got a lot to be desired for in the sound department if I'm honest but uh, there's something about listening to these old bootlegs which is very welcoming because they're very poorly recorded and I, I love my like good sound impressions so it's a bit of a contradiction but it just sounds very um intimate and very kind of uh revealing it's just it's a great kind of they have a great sound to them even though they're not technically very good uh but yeah love that glad to have picked it up on my kind of bootleg spree another one i picked up which started another kind of uh, chain of events for me which was miles davis um mercy miles live in vienna so this is the last concert or one of the last concerts he ever did in, uh, not Vienna, in uh, Vienne, Vienne in uh, France. And it's got some great 80s pop on here. Some people might call this like smooth jazz, um, but he plays like human nature. He plays time after time. They're my two favorite tracks on here. And um, he does it with such like delicacy and um, kind of, you know, it's not super, it's not un. It's got great tracks on it. The first track is pretty out there. Like, it gets pretty kind of experimental and very um, fusion-y, kind of like Bitches Brew and stuff. But, yeah, um, really surprised me, this album. Again, got it very, very cheap at a record fair. Uh, it had a ding corner. Here you go. It's got kind of like a crease in the corner. So it was going for quite cheap. But, um, yeah, very nice to pick this one up. Very happy with it. And next one, really nice record. This was kind of like a quality piece uh, from the Manchester Record Fair I picked up quite uh, the start of the 
start of March or February, and uh, they're on every Saturday or every once one Saturday a week, um, a month, which is great. And um, yeah, I'm, I love going. But this is kind of a prize I got from there, which is a first US press of Freak Out by the Mothers and Invention, uh, Frank Zappa. And um, this is just... The guy himself, it was on the wall, first thing. It was on the wall of, of the fair, so it was quite a premium item. I saw it and I was just like, man, i got to have that. Um, it, was, it wasn't that expensive. Again, like, it was within my budget for sure. And um, I <laughs> I have quite a generous budget for records, though. And um, I, I was just like, this is probably my favourite Frank Zappa record, even though it's, like, his first one. It's very self-aware. Um, it's kind of... Ve so sharp it, you know taking the mick out of hippies and kind of like um, social commentary and it was done in 1966 so pre Sergeant Pepper and just unbelievably influential record uh, very fun uh, very kind of the music on it's great from you know the Rolling Stones kind of ish first track um, Hungry Freaks Daddy um you know, I help I'm a rock is on here. Um, it's just a fun record, you know, it's so good. And to have a first US press, when I bought it off the guy, uh, he said like, you you understand this is, you know, you're you're taking a uh, an artifact home with you, you know, like you gotta take care of it. And I was like, yeah, 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 of course. Of course I keep them in um, MoFi sleeves <laughs> when I get home, which I do, you know, I assured him. But um, yeah, very happy to pick that up. I love quality over quantity, to be honest. Like, you know, when I was talking about the kind of odd Pete Seeger record and stuff I picked up, like I don't, I, I'd much rather get one of these than like five cheapies, you know. Um, this is kind of it, where, where it's it for me. And yeah. Might make a coffee, actually. Nice espresso, lovely. Another really nice original item I picked up. Um, I must admit I did buy this online because I saw it come up. Uh, one day I was looking up how much one of these might cost and um, then I found out and I was like, actually I really want that. <laughs> Which is Bitches Brew, uh, Miles Davis, first US press. Um, so I saw that the MoFi was coming out of this and I was like, how good does it sound? Um, and I looked up and someone said, no, no, the US first press actually sounds better than the new MoFi. And I was like, surely not. So I looked it up on Discogs. I found a copy and was like, that is pretty reasonable. So I thought, I'll grab it. Um, and this is, the, again, the sleeve has got the typical kind of rubbing on it, which comes with a lot of kind of US style cardboard sleeve, which I'm in love with. I love US uh, records. Um, I love how they sound. I love how they you know, the the heavy tip on jacket just feels like so much quality to them. Um, and yeah, uh, it's a bit of a niche of mine. But the main event is um, the 2i Columbia label. Uh, and it's just, a, it's just so, <laughs> Bitches Brew is a bit of a uh, controversial album, I'm sure. Uh, jazz people either love it or hate it. <laughs> people who listen to kind of like rock, um, either love it or hate it. I'm firmly in the love camp. It's uh, avant-garde, it's experimental, it's primal. It's it's not, It's not. just a movement throughout which you just kind of get lost in. Uh, it sounds like just, it just sounds, you know, the first track or the Spanish key sounds like you're kind of like hunting in a jungle somewhere, like a Henri Rousseau painting or something. Uh, sanctuary sounds like you're being sucked into that kind of night sky there and it's just the more you listen to it the more it kind of uh it gives back to you you know it's just so it's just such a great uh album it for for a time like it was my favorite jazz album of all time and i could still make a good case for it to be honest um it might not be conventional jazz but it's it takes jazz somewhere somewhere else you know um but yeah very happy to get up to get a first US press, which uh, I'm not listening to too much to be honest. I'm not listening to it loads, but um, 
I'm very it's, it's an artifact which I'm I'm gonna be keeping great stuff oh, and I have a copy to gift now so like you know I'll give it to someone some unlucky soul another one which uh, I did gift uh, after I kind of picked this one up which I'm so pleased to get as well again a bit of a you know um, a bit of a watershed in the kind of in a jazz collection but kind of blue uh, not first press the um, second or third press on CBS um, UK though and this is a CBS label again with textured finish as well which I love but um, I was in this bit uh, Miles Davis mood got Bitches Brew got the French live album and I was like I wonder what the best uh, everyone wonders this what's the best copy of Kind of Blue and um, I read somewhere that about like affordable press because obviously the best um, consensus wise is the kind of 6i US first press stereo and um I was looking up like what might be similar to that and someone said uh, on a forum somewhere that this is the uh, one of the best basically it, it was from the same master or something as the uh, first 6i pressing and it's not the Fontana first presses that don't sound as good which I can believe because I had a copy of uh, another early Fontana label and it didn't sound that great this is a CBS label, and someone did say this sounds very, very good, which they are correct. It didn't blow me away, to be honest. It didn't like, it wasn't like a true revelation. I feel like you could probably get better than this, but um, I got this very, very cheap compared to what it um, goes for. Uh, again, because I was doing this research, I did buy us online, and um, this, the person who was selling it was definitely... I get hunches about records sometimes, and the person who was selling it definitely didn't list it correctly, uh, condition-wise or kind of description-wise, and I was like, take a chance on that one. So um, I probably got it for about a third of what it's probably worth, and um, it's worth a lot. So great stuff. Uh, very happy to have it. Listen to it a bit. I li I've listened to Kind of Blue a lot in my life, so it's kind of another kind of nice artifact purchase um but i've got i have gifted my old copy of kind of blue so i don't keep multiples like that's my playing copy now as well as my um uh, only very select albums i have multiples of but uh yeah my my other copy i kind of gifted on because that's very nice isn't it you know you can get gift the gift of records um this one is a very special one as well uh, they're all special but this one just just seeing it now i'm like so excited um, I went to a night just here in Altrium, which was a man talking about Japanese vinyl, and I was, I was all over that, you know, uh, drinking Japanese beer and stuff. It was so good, and he had a load of Japanese pressings, and um, he pulled out one in particular. A lot of kind of new order, a lot of Joy Division, a lot of Smiths, a lot of Cern Ratio, a lot of Cocteau Twins. Just he had some quality Manchester stock. Um, or kind of the stuff we'd love to stock in the shop. And um, he had one in particular, though, which as soon as I saw it, I was like, sold, sold. Because he was selling them as well. And it was this one, uh, Kate Bush, uh, the kick inside on the alternate cover, um, the alternate sleeve for the, uh, the Japanese market. And doesn't she look beautiful on that cover, can I say? Um really he said he's never been played uh his collection is is kind of purely kind of archival again and he doesn't play the, he doesn't even own a turntable he said which is a bit ridiculous but um absolutely pristine condition on this and it sounds so nice i was chatting to him all night about it gave me a good deal on it and um just what we were talking about what i mentioned is you can see on japanese vinyl you can see the dynamics of the particular on that this second track here it's more pronounced than on a regular uh even audiophile record i find it's just there's something about them which how it's mastered how it's pressed he was talking about the paper stock and everything paper craft is quite big in japan and um i just i had to get a memory for the night and this was the one i just saw and was like what a what a treat you know as in 
um, to have an alternate cover and it be kind of the OB strip matches the kind of top she's wearing and to have a great sound impression of, you know, it probably is my favourite Kate Bush record. The more I listen to it, I do love Hounds of Love, but um, I think this is the one I want to put on more. Uh, Kate Bush, again, another kind of outsider artist like Daniel Johnston and stuff I find. Obviously, she's so popular, but someone who did something so unique, and that's just something I really am drawn to in um, music. Uh, there's no one like her, you know? No one else quite like Kate Bush. Mmm. Next one was um, another, a bit of a, a purchase I just had to take. Um... Basically, for a while, I love Chet Baker, as you've seen, and Chet Baker Sings is probably my favourite Chet Baker album, and again, one of my favourite uh, jazz albums ever. It's just such a great album. Ten I have the Tone Poet version, which I'm very, very fortunate to have, because they're out of press and very expensive, I did pay a lot for it. But um, I did want another copy, uh, just as a bit of a memento kind of thing. They don't come up often, especially not in the UK. I was going to pick up a 10 inch uh, of spoiler a bit now but a 10 inch version of Chet Baker Sings and I was going to pick up a UK one but I did find a US first press uh, from 1954 I think or, or something like crazy the, the, this came from like the early 50s or the mid 50s and um, you can tell it's pretty It's the, the record is unplayable basically I'm not going to be playing this, it's a bit of a, I put it on my um, easel at home, like I have an easel where I put my records and this is the placeholder, um, because I just love seeing it, I love seeing that I own this, and um, I'm going to play my Tone Poet, even if this was a clean copy, I'm going to play the Tone Poet version, um, it's not got all the tracks on here, it's only got like a handful, um, but it's got, it's not even got my favourite one on here, but um, a great, the original cover on here, Again, a bit of an artefact for me. Very special record, and I'm very happy to have this. Uh, moving on, we've got uh, The Great White Wonder, again. Um, seems like a freeze out. So this is a, another Bob Dylan bootleg, which, uh, if you can see the price there, I didn't pay that much. I did, um, I went down to, I got this from um, Frodsham in Convoy Records which is on like a bit of a garden centre there. And um, I was there one Saturday, the guy does know me. He, uh, I do kind of chat to him about record industry and kind of, I don't t tell everyone when I go into record shops, oh, I'm, I'm sold from Tasty Records, like I do to you guys on YouTube. Um, but I do have a select few where I kind of like to chat to them about uh, the industry as well as just general records. And um, it comes with, the main reason I wanted this is because the second side is specifically outtakes from like um, late Highway 61 into Blonde on Blonde stuff. Um, he was in the studio a lot around that time, 1965, 66. And um, it's, you know, got a really early version of Visions of Johanna on here. But the two which I really wanted were Farewell and She's Your Lover Now, which are on this track. She's Your Lover Now should have been on Blonde and Blonde, it's such a great outtake and um, Farewell is kind of like a old folk tune and he sounds very intoxicated on this one with a group of friends in a room and you can hear them kind of all singing it together and it's just a great kind of atmosphere. A few other great tracks on here, Lay Down Your Weary Tune, loads of outtakes on here, lots of like not like the live ones which I've shown before, again it's kind of like the basement tape so it's a lot of kind of outtakes. Again, obviously these have all been officially released now. Um, it's on orange vinyl I should show as well, I don't know if I showed that. But um, a lot of these have been officially released now, but I like to have the bootleg because it's a bit of a collectible. Um, I just kind of saw it and was like, gotta have it, you know. They don't come up that often, you know. Not, not they, You don't find them in every record shop. Um, next one is Noi or Noia or New, depending on what country you're from. Uh, but this is kind of, as far as I know, I don't know loads about this band, but I think they used to be part of Kraftwerk and then they moved on and did a bit more kind of kraut uh stuff. And this is Noise 75 and um, just a record which has been on my want list for about probably something like five years, you know. 
and um, I saw it on the stock list we get in the shop and I was just like gotta have it so I ordered some for the shop I ordered one for me and uh, very very pleased with it very nice kind of pr very cheap as well we, we're selling them for 20 quid in the shop and they're kind of like you get a really nice gatefold really textured sleeve the record sounds fantastic as well and um, it's very kind of a lot ch very chilled out music and um, very kind of long form um, again kind of it's got that craft work kind of edge to it. Um, great album, you know, and it's just one I've wanted for ages and finally got it, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, is a great one. Uh, Time Out by Dave Brubeck Quartet. I got this when it came into the shop and I saw a, uh, we had a, I, I had a first press even, I had like an original uh, Fontana press, not first press, but an original. A UK press. This came into the shop and it um, it's, on st it's a stereo record and mine was mono and I was kind of like I'd rather have the stereo because it, it, uh, the, there's a lot more kind of detail in these tracks and stuff um, in stereo and I was very happy to pick it up basically. Um, did a swap for Ben so it's actually in the racks now my copy and um, yeah it's kind of an import from the early 70s. Mine's probably worth more money. The, the one I swapped it for is probably worth more money, but this is like, um, I'd rather have this one. Um, again, it's just kind of like a 70s um, reissue. But yeah, happy to pick it up, you know. Another shop pickup, just like a uh, Uh Couple more picked up from the I uh, went to a shop in Abergelly of all places in uh, North Wales, which I do highly recommend going, and I picked up some reggae stuff. This is kind of what started my uh, reggae trend, which is, uh, I, this isn't reggae, uh, Green Onions. Uh, I picked this one up, and it's um, first UK press again. Absolutely wrecked, though. This disc is pretty, you know, not great, but again, I got it in the bargain section. Gave it a clean, came out fine. I don't really listen to it that much, I just thought it was a pretty cool pickup and nice thing to spin, you know, when got a few people around, like, you know, so it was a nice thing. I was heading over to Bangor to see some of my friends, so I was like, thinking of party records I wanted to pick up, Sh you know, show off a bit, like, you know, not bring Bob Dylan, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, Desmond Decker, um, we've got, this is the first Trojan press, and lovely rock steady. Uh, it's got um, 007 on here. Oh, oh, seven. Great stuff. Um, Rudy got sold. Again, like, great um, first press of, on the Trojan label. And this started my kind of, oh, look at that. First, like, really early Trojan label there as well. And, um, yeah, this kind of started a bit of a trend where I was picking up quite a lot of reggae stuff. Um, I also picked up from Abigeli this, um, the Staple Singers. So this is, like, early... It's, it's like bluesy gospel. And um, I had heard some of the later soul stuff, but this one's just like really kind of rootsy. And um, the guitar, it's basically just guitar, bit of percussion sometimes, and their voices. And the guitar itself is like a beautiful, clear, organic. It's obvious like a 60s uh, Stratocaster or something. And you can just hear it. Oh, it's just, it's just a great record to listen to. Um, very happy to pick this up, really clean. So this is one I picked up and I talk a lot about Vince Guaraldi around Christmas time when I'm listening to the Charlie Brown album, but this is one Ben saw on the, the list and he was just like, I gotta get that for Saul and I ended up taking it home with me. And um, yeah, three LPs this is on Craft Recordings and I know that the they did a, um, like a one step or like a proper big box, 170 quid, audio file release of this and I'm pretty sure this sounds it should sound just as good as that really like surely you can't sound any better than this a very very nice sounding record um, very kind of obviously good a lot of audio file records are kind of really making you know like oh, we got this from the original tapes you know we use the best sources and we use the best equipment to get it through and um, yeah love to pick it up got um, Cast Your Fate to the Wind which is the one I was most familiar with and um, there's like a whole side on one of the LPs of just outtakes of that, which is great to hear. Because um, it's such a short song, you just want it to go on over and over. So when you listen to this whole side of it, it's just like beautiful, you know, it's great. 
But um, yeah, I'm very happy with this because it means I don't have to wait till Christmas every year to listen to Vince Guaraldi. I can listen to him all year round, which I'm very, very happy with. And um, thanks very much, Ben. Very kind. This is Leon Thomas, Gold Sunrise in the Magic Mountain. On the Magic Mountain. Look at that cover. That's the first thing I saw. Second thing I saw was Leon Thomas. He was the guy who yodeled on Pharaoh Sanders' Karma. So I was like, what a guy. I'll pick that up. And um, he is... So... <laughs> Instant replay that. Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the uh, guy who kind of... Um, a very kind of soulful singing on um, the creator has a master plan on karma. And he did a few other things as well. Um, I'm trying to think now. He did some stuff with Archie Shep. And yeah, I saw, I never knew he had like a soul arm out. So I was like, oh, I saw this in uh, Liverpool. And I was like, yeah, I'll pick it up. And it's a very balanced record. I'll say that. So basically the first side is very kind of bluesy. Uh, he's kind of just singing straight up kind of vocal uh, gospel blues soul kind of stuff and um at first i was like is this really like what he's about like in his solo career not as far out as i expected and then um by the end of the first side he started to kind of warm up a bit and get a bit more kind of crazy with his voice and his voice truly is an instrument you know it's kind of like a saxophone he uses his voice and um just so expressive his band is really really encouraging it's a live album as well so live jazz i'd say is like the obvious well a lot of live jazz is very very good which i'll talk about a bit later on but um it's because something about live atmosphere in the in the crowd and i feel like jazz isn't the best thing to sit in a very confined space um kind of like punk music i guess or something and uh just be like Okay, now play. And it's like, well, with what? You know, with what inspiration? Uh, with what emotion in the room? You know, is this just clinical? Like, but um, yeah, this is a live album, so it's really organic, very nice. And then the second side, like I said, the end of the first side, it gets a bit stretching his legs. And the second side, it's just unleash his voice. And um, I would, this is the Liam Thomas I thought I was going to hear. And I'm um, very, very happy to pick it up. Give it a listen if you want. And. It's um, on Flying Dutchman Records. So Bob Thiel, who used to run and produce most of the Impulse Records uh, with like Coltrane and stuff on it, he started his own label and this is kind of follows the same um, Impulse moniker of really nice gatefold cover, um, very high quality jacket and disc and... Um, all intents and purposes in, in, in impulse really uh, so yeah very nice thing and very happy to pick it up I say that all the time now on this video uh, another one I picked up uh, which is started another train of events in my head which I start collecting stuff based on kind of other pickups and stuff <clears throat> but this is uh, Morgan which is, um, well, it's American, but Morgan apparently means morning in Norwegian. Thanks, Braga, for that one. I know you're watching. Um, but yeah, the day I bought this, I bought tickets to go to Norway on holiday. So I was like, uh, Edvard Munch, the artist who did the scream, morning, Morgan. And it just, it just all came, it just all happened. Everything happens for a reason, you know? and I had to pick it up. It's kind of heavy psych, um, some kind of like harder rock elements to it, and I'm very happy to pick it up again with that cover. Like, that's an art piece in itself. I love, um, you know, art in general, and Edvard Munch, who did the um, the Scream, I, I've been really digging his work, and I'm going to see a lot of it in Norway, hopefully. But until then, I've got this really great psych album to hold me over um it's a reissue so it's something like 2007 and um the originals are something like 300 quid so it's like you know this or 300 quid basically uh but yeah very happy to pick it up uh great album been listening to it quite a lot but then my mind started thinking psychedelic uh more on that later 
But um, before then, I got this Blues Busters record, Philip and Lloyd. Uh, this is kind of solely reggae. Again, I was in a reggae mood, and I've already showed off a few more Trojan stuff in a previous New Arrivals video. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is kind of solely, a lot more solely than reggae, I'd say. And it's all right. I picked it up based on the cover, and because it's a classic Roots tune on it, and I was like, yeah, yeah, great. And it's all right, you know. Again, maybe not one I'll kind of keep around, but it's good to listen to, for sure. And, um... Yeah, very happy to have it. Very popular back in the day, apparently. Uh, the last kind of five or six here, um, and this one's a great one I've really been happy to pick up. It's What's Going On, Marvin Gaye. Looks ordinary, right? But I already had a, um, like, a 180 gram reissue from just a couple of years ago, and I was pretty happy with that. Well, to be honest, I wasn't that happy with it. It was kind of a bit... Uh, the sound wasn't tip top. It did sound very, very good and very, very clear, but at times it sounded a bit washed out and a lot of his backing vocals weren't particularly there. But I watched a video um, on the best sound and pressing of Marvin Gaye, What's Going On? And they said that to look out for this kind of blue Tamla label on the um, original black label. And I was like, I will. And I found this in a record shop and was like, I'll have that for sure. Um, it was, yeah, it was it was reasonably priced, I guess. What it is, I don't think the person knew that it was such a a bit of a sought after item because apparently like Motown collectors are quite savvy to these because uh, they sound very very good. And I was a bit, I did pick pick it up on a whim, and I was a bit like, how much better could it sound? But I was very very satisfied with the results. Very much clearer. Um, so much of the drums are present. So much more of the backing vocals are present. Um, and I do love this record, it's such a great record and I'm very happy to have a nice copy. The sleeve isn't as good, it's only a single jacket instead of the gatefold and it's a bit like the the cover is a bit kind of not great uh, reproduction but you know it's all about the music right, uh, that's what I'm interested in and gift time, I've got another, I've got a Marvin Gaye What's Going On to uh, give away so if you want one and you can I don't know, if you know me well, well enough, I'll, I'll gift you a Marvin Gaye. Um, anyway, uh, next one. This is Sigarosa. Uh, Sigarose. Uh, this is um, the their 1989 record. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Uh, Agilis by... No, I'm not even going to do it. I think in Icelandic it means um, new beginning or good beginning or good start or uh, something like that. And I've known about this record for a while. I remember listening to this in like first year of university and stuff. And it's very um, spacey. It's very ambient. Uh, it's it's a very kind of comforting listen. Uh, very engaging though. Again, almost like modern classical to be honest. And I just feel that like that kind of alien fetus when I listen to it it's very um, it's just a great album great album and I'm glad to pick this one up because it's a very nice sound impressing from uh, quite recently 2021 a uh, nice textured kind of cover on there and um, yeah I got this quite cheap so I was, I was like why not you know uh, another thing is what some record shop owners do is they don't buy records or especially not brand new records they could get from distributor elsewhere in from other record shops because they're like oh why would I do that I'd rather just buy them from my own shop but I think that takes a lot of the fun out of record collecting you know because obviously you know I bought that from another shop but I don't care you know it's, it takes the fun out of record collecting anyway another brand new record uh, which I did get from the shop and we have got in stock right now is David Gray White Ladder this is a great album from my youth I used to listen to this quite a lot, had it on CD, my mum loves David Gray as well, uh, so it's played a lot in the house, and I found out that this is the best-selling record of all time in Ireland, which is quite an achievement, I'd say, David Gray. Um, he's just, if you've not heard this record, it's so accessible, it's so kind of unique and creative, and, um, you know, some kind of like Indotronica or something like electronic elements for sure um, but kind of folk folky as well you know because he's obviously a guitar player and 
um, a singer-songwriter, and just some great tracks, you know, Please Forgive Me, Babylon, My Oh My, um, This Year's Love, Sail Away, Say Hello, Wave Goodbye. It's just great all the way through, and it's a very autumn album as well, and um, it kind of contradicts my spring feeling, but it's it's just, I can't resist it, honestly. It's just, um, I don't know why I've not picked it up sooner, and I've been really enjoying listening to it recently. Uh, yeah, what else do you say? White Vinyl, new remaster. They were in stock. They went or they went out of stock for a while, and they were going for pretty expensive, and now they're back in stock. So if you need one, make sure you uh, grab one quick, because they probably won't hang around. Um, and... This one's one from this week. This week! This week, new releases. Uh, I wanted this as soon as I saw it was announced. And this is uh, Alice Coltrane, Journey, and Sachidananda. Sachidananda. Very, very collectible record. It's got uh, Ferris Sanders on here. I remember, it, you know, this goes for way above just your standard Impulse record. Uh, very, very accessible, like I said again. It's very avant-garde, like very loads of Eastern kind of swirlings and um, kind of a lot of sitars or harp as well is on this track, on this album. Um, you know, just some very kind of, you know, very soothing, very kind of um, thoughtful spiritual jazz, which is just can't get enough of it. Obviously, Alice Coltrane is um, John Coltrane's wife and a very unique artist in her own right. I'd say... I'd still be very much into Ars Coltrane if I'd never heard of, uh, if if she was no in no way connected to John Coltrane, if that makes sense. Uh, she's not just kind of like a sequel to John Coltrane or kind of like you listen to it because you like John Coltrane. It's I don't know. It's she she's an artist in her own right, and um, yeah, these don't hang about again. We got the Ferris Sanders one in the Karma, and it just sold out straight away in the shop, and it's sold out with distributors now. I'm pretty sure, and um, yeah, make sure you grab a copy because anyone will love that album honestly like you gotta you gotta you gotta feel it to believe it you know uh accessible stuff which is great les mccain les mccann or les mccain limited um this on pacific jazz again uh san francisco live uh, i didn't know much about him but i saw that it's an original kind of pacific jazz label uh, it was very filthy, the record. This particular record shop, which I won't call out, but um, they don't do a great kind of job cleaning their records. And um, I did give it a clean, and it's cleaned up fine. But I'm very happy to pick up this kind of original uh, first US press specific jazz, because I'm sure it'll sound very, very nice. And um, again, it was one I kind of like mulled over a bit. I listened to it on digital and stuff, and Decided I really liked it. Kind of like cool jazz folk, uh, cool jazz soul jazz stuff. And um, apparently he played with like um, Prince and stuff later in his career. And he's still alive apparently as well. But yeah, uh, Les McCain or Les McCann. I guess I'll never know your name, but nice thing. Uh, another thing I picked up from him was this Art Blakey uh, live album, Meet Him Meet in the Jazz Corner of the World. That uh, last one was a live album as well, live in San Francisco. Like I said, a lot of live jazz is superior because there's a bit of an atmosphere in the room. And this is a, don't think it's a first press, but it's an original uh, from the 60s uh, blue note press of this album. And it's in pristine condition. Uh, very, very clean copy. Uh, wasn't too cheap, but like I was, I was thinking a bit like, yeah, go on, you know. And um, it was actually in its original shrink, but I just tore it off because I'm not about that much. And, um, sorry, mad collectors, you know, I, I don't usually keep stuff in the shrink. And, um, just really clean. And, uh, Art Blakey, you'll know, like, Moaning, like, that's as easily his biggest track. Uh, that's, like, a, a jazz-defining track, I'd say. And, um, I've not actually listened to this yet, so I'll... Because I've got it so recently that I'll, um, gotta, gotta listen to them. But, yeah, uh, very happy to have picked that one up. And, um, yeah... Always add into my original Blue Note and Impulse collection as much as I can. Great stuff. And last, we finally reached the end, folks, I'm afraid. Or uh, you'll be thankful to know. Um, I just want to say if you've made, this, made it this far, uh, you are a true friend to the shop and to me. And uh, I'm very, very thankful you're disinterested in my kind of 
uh, musical appreciation that you'll stick around this long to hear me ramble over them. Um, but yeah, thanks very much. Um, and I'll see you out with this unbelievable find, honestly. It's not as unbelievable as it could have been, but um, should I show you? No, I'll hold it off for a bit. But I had actually been listening to this record about a week or two ago. Uh, just out of, I can't remember why I started listening to it. I think it might have come up in my shuffle or something on Spotify. And um, I just thought, what a great album. And I had an opportunity to get a copy of it. Um, originals are very, very expensive, very hard to find. I had an opportunity to buy um, a reissue of it about a year ago. And I passed up on it because it was just, I was a bit like, oh, the sound quality won't be all there. And, um, I'll, I'm a bit like, I was a bit, it was a bootleg, I think, and I was a bit like, oh, I don't really want to just buy this, like, you know, it was about 40 quid, and um, I was I was just like, I'm not going to buy that, like, you know, I weighed it up and just didn't buy it, and I, I in that moment, about a week ago, I was like, I hadn't thought about it for a long time, and I was just had a, twing, a twang of regret, I was like, oh, I should have bought that back in the day, because you can't buy them now online, like, a lot of the listings have been taken down off Discogs, you can't sell bootlegs on Discogs, so you can't buy them. You can only buy them in shop, uh, in person. Like I said, originals are something like five five grand, you know, so very expensive, very collectible record, they only made 200 of them. But I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it over and done with. This is Fraction Moonblood. Uh, I think this is going to be the, the thumbnail of this video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll do a bit of a face there. Anyway, um, very, very happy. Um, this is kind of early 70s hard rock psych. If you're vaguely interested in, like, The Doors or kind of Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple or Black Sabbath, um, stuff like that, that's kind of what it sounds like. And it's so... It's not like any of them at all at the same time. It's so unique. Uh, it was their first and only album. It was kind of, if you don't know the story, it was a load of guys who kind of worked manual labour jobs and stuff, and they got up early to record and rehearse and uh, used all their money to kind of, like, make this record, and they only made a few of them. And then it's so kind of methodical. Some of the guitar is so kind of um, clean and very kind of um, thoughtful guitar lines on here. Um, but then it kind of builds to an overflow and then goes back to kind of like a uh, a bit of a methodical mood and just kind of strip back. Um, and just look at the cover, like Fraction Moonblood, um, with the original kind of sleeve which they inspired from LA Woman, and that comes out there. There's a bit of contention over which way it's meant to go. Like, according to the lyric sheet, it's meant to go this way, because the lyrics are on the back there. So if you logically think it should go in that way, like straight up, it should look like that, right? But I kind of like it the other way, but who knows? Who knows? Um, another thing you might know about this record, it's actually Christian rock. Um, I didn't know what elements was part of it before I got it on vinyl. I started listening to it and I was like, oh yeah, I read along to the lyrics. I was like, yeah, yeah. It's, he's like talking about like the Lord and stuff. And I'm like, Man, that's that's far out. <laughs> that's what I thought about that. Um, but yeah, uh, great stuff. And it sounds so good. It must have been sourced from like at least a needle drop, I'd say, of an original pressing because there's so much more nuance, which I didn't hear when I was streaming digitally. Um, the presence in the room is there, which might just be my setup, but like it, it's just a different experience. And I've been listening to this every night since I got it like last week. And um, it's just sucking me in every time I, I listen to it. And just a lot of mystery around this record. And just, I'm s it's such a unique item as well. Uh, it is a, I'm fairly certain it's a bootleg. It's from like the 90s. Um, and I'll, I don't say, obviously you've probably noticed, I don't say how much I paid for records often. I paid £25 for this um, at a record fair. And I think the guy understood I knew what it was when I picked it out because I was just like, give it to me, please, now uh, I'll have it. Usually I think a bit of records and um, I was just like, nope, I need it. Uh, but yeah, very happy with this. Um, Fraction Moonblood.
give it a listen on Spotify and um, yeah very happy to, to have picked it up and that's the end guys you've made it I'm very proud of you um, thanks for listening to me ramble about records uh, and if you have any comments at all let me know and thanks very much for watching I'll get down to editing this video very very soon and uh, yeah um, thanks very much don't forget to like and subscribe don't forget to uh, check the bell don't forget to check the website the main list has just gone out so there's loads of great stuff get signed up to the main list come into the shop I'm here on Saturday Friday and Saturday and um, Jess is here on Sunday so we'll, we'll, we're open seven days a week you can just there's no excuse just come down you know get a plane if you have to uh, anyway this video has gone on long enough stop him um, thanks very much sincerely thanks very much and uh, I'll see you in the shop See you later.